Have you guys ever fallen in love before? Me too. I have many times with many, many, many IEMs. That's right. You guys thought I was going to say headphones. No, man. I am IEM for life, man. I don't cheat like that. I don't intermingle. I am IEM forever. I am for life. Hey friends, to me, welcome back to another video on Giz Audio. And as much as this video is a review of the Solve Ears RSV, which is one of my most favorite items ever, under $1,000, it's also more of a love story. Because again, like I said, this is one of my most favorite IEMs ever under a thousand. And it rivals even my current favorite, the DA Audio Oracle. I would say they are neck and neck really, which is saying a lot because I love the Oracle. And the RSV, I feel like I love it just as much, if not more, for certain songs. And I also love the Oracle more for certain songs as well. But we're not going to get into all of that right now. That's going to be in the comparison section later on in this video. RSV by Soft Ears. This is a full BA set, five BAs on each side. And I know what you guys are thinking already when you hear full BA set. You guys are probably thinking, oh my god, the BA timbre, the plasticiness, the thin weightlessness, the overall unnatural feeling timbre. Oh no. These don't have that. Not even in the slightest. The timbre on these are so organic, real and beautiful. And that's my number one favorite thing about the RSV. Everything just comes across very real. And you match that with tuning that's also very excellent. And you get an IM that's just a super all-rounder that sounds beautiful with just any genre of music, any instruments, male vocals, female vocals, doesn't matter. It sounds real. Overall, a very, very beautiful set. Now, tuning on these, let's start off with the bass. Now, the bass has I would say enough power. It's not gonna satisfy any bass heads out there, anyone who really wants loud, thumpy, earth chattering bass. This is not like that, but it has enough bass to satisfy everyone else out there for sure. Now the bass is gonna be more focused on the mid bass, not the sub bass. You do get some of the sub bass, but the mid bass is gonna be a little bit more prominent. Now, when it comes to bass texture, the dynamic of it, this is where it falls short just a little bit. It is a full BA after all, so it doesn't really have that kind of dynamic driver, thumpy, dynamic bass, if you will. So that is missing from the RSV. Now, not to say that it's not dynamic at all. It's not soft or blunt or anything like that. It's just not as dynamic as some of you guys might want it. But for me, I'm not bothered by it at all. On to the mid-range. The mid-range separation from the bass is excellent. It is, I would say, on the clean side, but it never touches the thin territory. So, for example, the Moonjaw variation has extremely good separation, but it does come across too clean or too thin, especially in the lower mid-range and male vocals. They come across just a little bit, just thin and lacking a little bit of life. Now these have really good separation, not as good as a variation, but it doesn't suffer from that same thinness that the variation suffers. So everything again comes across more organic on these as opposed to the variation. Now onto the rest of the mid-range, the female vocals and the instrumentals that live in the mid-range in general. Everything just sounds the way they should. It sounds correct. And that has to do mainly with the tuning and again, the very natural feeling timbre in here. Everything feels just the way they should. Female vocals has a bit of energy. I wouldn't say too much energy. They don't come across shouty in any way, which is a good thing, but they also don't come across overly energetic or overly bright at the same time. So everything again just feels, I would say slightly bit more relaxed, real and relaxed. I guess those are the two best descriptors for female vocals and generally any instruments that live in the higher mid-range um, territory. Now onto the treble region, I wouldn't say that these are bright. I wouldn't say that these are energetic. I would say leaning on the tamer side, but I wouldn't say that they're dark in any way. It definitely has enough treble to bring female vocals and bring a lot of instruments to life, but I wouldn't say it serves to highlight any particular aspect of those instruments. It doesn't heighten or reveal any little micro details or anything like that. It's just enough to not feel too tamed or too dark. It's just a neutral treble, if you will. Now, if you got into this point of review, you might be thinking, Timmy, that all sounds great, you know? The bass is good, the mid-range is good, the treble is good. Everything sounds so real, everything sounds so right. Are these the best I am in the world then? 
Um, no, they're, they're not the best IEM in the world because every IEM has a flaw and these are no different. Despite how amazing they are, there is one flaw about them, although not a big one, and that is in the detail department. These are not the most resolving IEM for $700. Let's bring up my scale and see where these land, all right? As you can see, the star fields in the middle, that's just average detail retrieval. We have the variations, of course, and the Anoli VX at the top. And on the other end, we have the Blano 3 and a pixelated trash can. These land, I would say, right in between the star field and the variation. It's not as resolving as a variation, but it's not average either. So it's above average in terms of resolving power, but I would say that it falls a little bit short of other mainstay at the $700 price point. But like I said in every video, details only matter about 20 to 30%. A lot of what makes your music sound good has to do with tuning, and these are excellent. They're amazingly well-tuned. These having a little bit less detail than your typical $700 IEM doesn't bug me at all because the tuning and the timbre more than makes up for that little bit of shortcoming. Now onto imaging and soundstage. And on both of those categories, I feel like these are again on the a little bit above average side. Now, soundstage, they're not the widest, but they're also not narrow at the same time. It's more like just a little bit outside your head. It's not gonna bug you in any way, but at the same time, again, it's really not gonna impress you. In terms of imaging, I would say that these have okay imaging, just average imaging, just like a lot of other IEMs out there. And just for context, many IEM falls into this category, even under $1,000 to have average imaging and average soundstage. There are very few IEMs that live in the upper echelon of perfect imaging, wide soundstage, and there's even fewer of them that does those two things together perfectly. And those are generally a bit higher up in price sometimes. Not all of them, but a lot of them are higher up in price. These $700 having average imaging and soundstage, not a detriment at all. But yes, that's still something that needs to be said. They're just average. So with all that being said, let's finally jump into the comparison. And the main comparison with these are gonna be the Oracle and the Blessing 2 Dust. For me, the tuning on both of those IEMs are similar to these. I'm gonna be comparing this one mainly to the Oracle today because that is the closest one. And that's also my number one favorite under $1,000. Maybe these are number one now. I don't know. I really like them both equally, I would say. I would say that if you're picking between the Oracle or the RSV, it's very simple. If you want more dynamic feeling bass, then Oracle is gonna have the RSV beat. But if you want more organic feeling vocals or organic feeling mid-range in general, then the RSV is the better bet. Depends on what you listen to. If your library mainly consists of bass heavy songs and you love bass in general, then the Oracle is the better bet. But if you don't really care too much about the bass, these have sufficient enough bass already. If you care more about the vocals, then the RSV is the pick for you. It's really that simple. Both IEMs are fantastically tuned. The timbre on both as well are also very beautiful. I would say level of details are about the same as well. They're not really the best in their category. They both fall short of the variations. In terms of imaging and soundstage, I would say, Again, about the same as well. So it's really better bass or you want better mid-range. All right, guys, that is it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening to this love story of me and RSV by Softwares. And the best part about this really is that this happens to be their cheapest model, which I wholeheartedly appreciate because the rest of their model, I have a few more to cover here, uh, they're expensive. This being the most affordable one and being my favorite one, yeah. Thank God for that. All right, guys, that's it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching again. If you're new here, subscribe. Uh, I do a lot of IEM video, audio video in general. Also, there's a Facebook group link below. You can see all these videos early. I also have an IEM ranking list. That's also down there as well. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.